next man. Let's get a man a hand for preparing this food. Tasty. I think there's more. You want to get some? Get some. Mike can help you so. All right. Uh, we, we're recording this uh, for the brothers who cannot be here uh, for, for whatever reason, whether or not they uh, are sick, shut in, or just not coming out because of masks and COVID and these things. So we want to record it. That's why I'm up here and not on the floor. Uh, just want you to know I'm grandstanding. I'm just trying to record it for the brothers who can't be here. Amen. We used to pour out wine for the brothers who couldn't be here. Be here. <laughs> now we're recording for the brothers who couldn't be here. Look at God, right? <laughs> well, uh, we're going to uh, look at the book of Joshua. I'm in chapter 1 of Joshua. Uh, if you have the Bible, uh, I think they're in the chairs behind you, or if you want to look at it on your phone in a digital way, uh, I ask that you would join me in the book of Joshua. Joshua chapter 1. The first one you come to in Joshua. When you have it, say amen. 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 When you have it, say amen. amen. If you need a minute, say hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Joshua chapter You can look at NIV. That's cool. I'm going to be coming out of the CSB. Joshua chapter 1, verse 9, specifically we're going to look at it. And the Lord is speaking to Joshua, and he says, Haven't I commanded you, be strong and courageous, do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Amen. 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 I want to talk, gentlemen, briefly about having enough courage to take the next step. Having enough courage to take the next step. If you don't know Joshua, Joshua had been Moses' understudy. Mm -hmm. Moses was now dead as we get to this place, and it was time for Joshua to step up and lead the people of God forward. God's plan and God's mission must go on. Amen? Amen. And as great as, as the leader as Moses was, uh, his death uh, cannot and could not stop the mission of God. Now Joshua always had faith in the Lord, but Moses was his covering, and, and Moses was his leader. So uh, Joshua was able to fit in this supporting role, but now it was time for Joshua to step up. We're talking about having enough courage to take that next step. In the past, Moses would go up on a mountain and he would bring instructions back from God with him. He would go into the tent of the meeting and Joshua was always close by, but the Lord spoke to Moses and Moses spoke to Joshua. But now it was time for Joshua to seek the face of the Lord for himself, to seek directions directly from him and to respond accordingly. In Joshua chapter 1, you look at verse 5, uh, the Lord tells Joshua, I will be with you just as I was with Moses. I will not leave you or abandon you. He tells him in, in, in verse 6, be strong and, and, and be courageous. He tells him in verse 7, be strong and very Courageous, And then he tells him in verse 9, be strong and be courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. So my question is, why would Joshua and why would we ever fear taking the next? 
next step in the Lord. Right? Why are we hesitant and even resistant to the movement of God in our lives? Why did God have to tell Joshua so many times to be strong and to be courageous? Joshua was a warrior. Joshua was, was, was down to fight wherever, whoever, whenever. Right? But when it came to leading for the Lord, he needed to be reminded to be strong and to be courageous. He, he needed to, to be reminded that God was with him. He needed to be reminded that he needed to lean on him and trust him because God would not abandon him. But I got to wonder, what was Joshua scared of? I wonder if he thought that Moses was such a great leader that there's no way I could compare to him. And so we decided just not to move. You know, sometimes we, we, we look at those who are ahead of us or in front of us or doing something that we feel that we might can do. But if they're good at it, we get intimidated by that. We compare ourselves to them. You know, when you compare yourself to somebody else, there's only two ways you can go. Either you can feel better about yourself because you think you're higher than them, or you feel worse about yourself because you think somehow they're better than you. But you forget that you've been fearfully and wonderfully made. Yeah, yeah. That God made you, uniquely you. And, and you're not supposed to compare yourself to nobody else because you are who God created and wanted you to be. Yeah, yeah. So I wonder, was he looking at, was he looking at Moses? Mm -hmm. He's like, man, this dude is so, so great. I can't. I, there's no way. I, I, I can't even be called to do this because I'm looking at him. I wonder if Joshua thought the task of leading was so overwhelming that he just wasn't gifted enough to do it. Because sometimes we, we, we look at ourselves and some of us think more highly of ourselves than we are. But some of us think more lowly of ourselves than we are. You know, some of us think like, man, there's no way I can do that. And the truth is, anything that's worth God, God's attention and God's mission, you can't do without God. God don't want you to do it without him. So when you look at yourself without God, yeah, I guess you can look at yourself and say, no, I can't do that. But look at yourself with God. I'm glad it's that I can do all things through him, Christ, that strengthens me. So looking at yourself without God, doesn't even matter. It's who you are in him, right? Yeah. And then I say, well, maybe, just in a practical sense, maybe Joshua saw how stubborn the people was, mm -hmm. right? Maybe he saw their disobedience to God. Maybe he's seeing how much stress Moses was under, right? And, 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 and how much frustration that Moses felt that he lost his cool and thus lost his opportunity to lead the people of God into the promised land. Mm -hmm. and, and maybe Joshua just looked like, you know what, man, I ain't trying to deal with that. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. I'm, I'm not trying to, to, to sacrifice myself for some people who don't appreciate yeah. the sacrifice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But Moses was rewarded mm -hmm. by God. He might not have entered the physical promised land, but surely he went to be with the Lord, yeah. right? Amen. And, and, and so I don't know what it was that, that Joshua struggled with, but I do know when we look at others, when we look at uh, uh, what is being asked, even when we look at the people around us, you know, we can feel inadequate, we can feel overwhelmed, but the worst part is we allow an opportunity to do something great for the Lord passes by. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because we don't have the ability to be strong and courageous. I have to ask, men, have you thought about your next step? Do you pray about your next step? Or do you quietly hope that what you are doing is enough? 
No, I don't speak out loud. <laughs> but seriously, do, do, you, do, do you feel comfortable that if I'm in the same place that I am right now, doing the same thing that I'm doing right now, next year at this time, 10 years from at this time, that the Lord will be pleased? Am I doing all that I can to bring God glory? Am I willing to take the next step? Am I hesitant? Am I resistant? Am I scared? I wonder many times when I was in the world working and I'm in the church working, I wonder like what's on a guy in mind? You know, you got, you got one guy and ask yourself, am I the guy who, who go to work and I try to move up the ladder at work. I look for promotion, I look for raise, I look for growth. Well, I make a guy go to work and say, I could do the same thing for 30 years, and don't mess with me, I won't mess with you. I'm not critiquing, I'm just asking. You know, because wh which category do you find yourself in, right? Because we serve a living God a God who calls us to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. There's an expectation from God that we would continue to grow in him until we go to him. Amen? Amen. But, but not only that we would grow, uh, but we who he has saved, right, that we would continue to the, the work that he started. Is the reason he says in John 20 and 21, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. Right? And so ask yourself, what is the next step that God is calling me to take for his glory? You know, when we used to ball, play basketball, years ago, we'd be on the court and Guys be playing, and we come up and we say, yo, we got next. <laughs> right? And that, they knew that meant we wanted to see them. When that game was over, we had our five, we was ready to, to take on that, that next road. When, when we got finished playing, we would look, who got next? Yeah. Right? Who, who, who trying to see us? And, and, you know, many times after we done smashed cats on the court, True story, am I right, Carl? <laughs> you know. Cause well, let's just mix the teams up. You know. Because they didn't want to face the squad after we won. And, and so there was this, this, I'm here and I'm here and I'm waiting, you know, but yet am I really ready to go in? Do I do I feel comfortable with those who I'm with? <laughs> right? When I, when I look to my left and I look to my right, are these guys I want to win or lose with? Mm -hmm. See, because if you don't feel comfortable where you at, you will never step up. You will never say, we got next. Right? You'll sit there and be like, nah. They'll be like, yo, you ball? you be like, nah, I'm good. Because you waiting on somebody you know to come to the court. You ever been that dude? No, nah, I got two of my squad coming up. I ain't balling with these guys. Because sometimes I think that's how we be. We be in church like, ah, I would, but I really don't mess with y'all like that, so I'm not going to really do that like that, and I'm not going to. Yep, come on, come on, yeah. Because it's like we waiting on somebody else. Mm -hmm. We been waiting on somebody to step up, or we waiting on somebody else to come, come get us, but we never just say, I got next. Mm -hmm. There's a spirit of complacency. Every time I make an announcement at church, every time we say we need somebody to lead, we need somebody to do, you know who step up? Our wives, sisters, single parent women. Women step up for everything. They come and say, Pastor, can, can a woman lead that? I'm like, yeah, yeah. Woman gonna have to lead that. Like, that that's all we got. Now, 
the next step for each of us is different. Let's be clear, right? We're at different places, so so the next step is different. For some of us, that next step is just showing up for church each week. Right? That, that might be the next step. Just, just showing up. I'm going to show up every Sunday. That, that's my next step. For, for some of us, the next step might be, I'm going to put a, I'm not ready to tithe yet, but I'm going to put a sacrificial gift in the offering. That's my next step. I'm going I'm to start pulling out more than a five. That, that's my, my next step. For some, it's, it's, I need to commit to a ministry. For some, I, I might need to lead. A ministry for some as I need to be in a small group, for some as I may need to lead the small group. I, I, I wonder, as I was just talking to John, who's the next male on the worship team? I, I wonder who, who's the next male that's going to step up and say, Pastor, I'll lead evangelism. Who the next deacon going to be? Who's going to lead food distribution after the Collins leave? Right? Who's going to lead security? Who's going to become the next preacher, the next minister, the next pastor? Mm -hmm. see, see, the Lord assembles people. And every time I pray, Lord, send me, send me, send me, right? People show up, but nobody say, here am I, send me. Mm -hmm. so, so I'm trying to figure out, when, what is the call waiting on? I got folks that have come for a month. Then you don't say it for two months. I got folks who come for six months, but won't join. I got folks that join that won't come. And I keep saying, Lord, as I go down this list, I see, man, 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 man. What is, what is needed? You see, Tell them to be strong. Tell them to be courageous. Yeah. Yeah. Tell them do not be afraid yeah. or discouraged. Mm -hmm. Tell them the Lord their God is with them yeah. and be with them wherever they go. Yeah. See, God is saying to us, like he said to, to Joshua, that, that we don't have to fear failure. That we have to stop fearing commitment. It's hard to ask you to commit to a church when you won't commit to your woman. Mm. Ask you to commit to the church and you're not committing to be a father yet. Mm. You're not committing to just be a good brother. Yeah, yeah. A good child of God. Like, 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 like that request is not even reasonable to commit to the church when you haven't committed to yourself. I wonder if we think we have a better plan for our lives than the Lord does. Right? It was the Lord who said, I know the plans I have for you. Plans to prosper you. Plans not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope in the future. And God calls us to walk by faith, not by sight. Yeah, we don't know the beginning from the end. He does. I don't want to know how it's going to end up. He just wants us to take a step in the right direction. Yeah. He just want to know what's your next step. Mm -hmm. Move from where you are. Proverbs 16 and 9 says, uh, in our hearts, uh, 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 humans plan their course, but the Lord establishes their steps. Yeah. At some point, we got, to, we got to acknowledge that his word is a, is a lamp to, a, to our feet and a light. But to our path, this means we're going to follow God's positioning system, Amen. right? That's his GPS. That's allowing him the, the, the opportunity uh, as the one who designed us to actually direct us where he wants us to go. Mm -hmm. Like at some point, his command and, and his presence got to mean something to us. So at, at some point, I feel like we got to make a decision to step up and go from boys to men. Right? Mm -hmm. He was calling Joshua like, yeah, you had a covenant. 
You had a leader, you had somebody that stood in front of you, somebody who always said, I'll take it, and, and you was cool sliding this and I'm on your team. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But now I need you to step up. Mm -hmm. Amen. I need you to get your own team together. Who your squad? Amen. Right? You captain, I'm kicking, pit, pat, I'm pat, I'm a captain, you pick your players, I pick my players. Like it's time to step up. Right? Amen. I don't know about you, but every day I hear about somebody else getting killed. Every day I hear about somebody else carjacking somebody. Every time I hear about somebody getting carjacked, it used to be man on man, black on black. Now it's man on woman, woman on man. We all killing each other. And I don't know if you realize, that's somebody's son. That's somebody's daughter. That's somebody's daddy. That's somebody's mama. Right? And at some point, we got to stop playing church and start being the church. Like the world is the way it is. I believe because we're not stepping up. Because we're not being bold and courageous. Because we're watching the news and not having an effect on it. At some point, we got to surrender our will to his will. Our wants for his glory. And and. This is, as I said, it's not just a church thing, but it's just stepping up as husbands, stepping up as fathers, stepping up as uncles, stepping up as neighbors, stepping up as leaders mm -hmm. in our community. You know, I've read there is no man stronger than a godly man. You know where I read that? It's a great as he that is in me than he that is in the world. Amen. Which means I really can do all things through Christ that strengthens me, right? Yeah. And, and so, I, I, I need to ask, right, that, that we would look inside, ask ourselves, you know, do I fear stepping up? Right? And I get it. I, I feared stepping up. I, 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 I felt inadequate for the call. There was nothing about me uh, that I thought, hey, yeah, God want me to be. God want to use me. I got some good stuff that I'm bringing to the table to pass. Like, no. Nah. It was like, man, are you serious? I had to ask pastor after pastor, like, yo, I think this is what the Lord want, but I, like, like, let me tell you about who I am, like, what I did, and like, I need you to really know. And he's like, oh, no, that's good testimony. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I'm like, oh, what I'm saying is, like, I could be in here preaching and somebody come in and be like, yo, let me tell you about the bull. Right? Like, and I, I just, and I, I felt like I needed to tell everybody. A prerequisite for you were getting me up here is I got to tell you everything that I did, mm. who I was, who Larry Anderson is for real, you know, before Christ. I thought I had to, I had to say that. Because I didn't want to embarrass the church. I didn't want them to be like, oh my God, I heard you. Like, yeah, I was trying to tell you. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was trying to let y'all know. Like, oh. Because yes, I felt overwhelmed and inadequate and, and not worthy. And, and all that was true. It was like, but God. When you surrender your will and your something, you let him take over what's next. There's no stopping what God can get accomplished from a man that's willing to seek him first. So, right where you are, I want us to pray. Just you and, you and God, I want you to pray. I want you to ask God first. Just ask God, God, what's, what's the next step you have for me? Then I want you to be honest and say, what is scaring me the most about taking it? Mm -hmm. All right. So for five minutes, right where you are, just close your eyes and just talk to the Lord. Just ask him, what's, no, what's my next step? What's next for me? Mm -hmm. And what scares me from taking that next step? prayer you made in the garden of Gethsemane. You prayed that if it was possible for that cup to pass, but not by your will, but by 
accepted that cup. Your next step was to a cross on Calvary. Knowing you had ungrateful sinners that needed to be saved. Your love continued to empower you to take that next step. Even though that next step was crucifixion. That next step was painful, humiliating. You allowed yourself to be slapped, to be spit upon. sacrificing yourself for us that we could have life and have it everlasting. All our heads bowed and eyes, clo eyes closed. If, if you're here and you have not accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, that might be your next step today. I don't know every man in here and well, not every man in here is saved and and so I want to give you an opportunity. We believe that Jesus died for our sins, that he was buried, and on the third day he arose again, defeating sin and defeating death and giving us a path to glory. Our Lord Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except by me. And so he gives us access to glory by the blood shed on Calvary. And he gives us forgiveness of our sins. That's the amazing grace we're offered because of him. All we have to do is say, yes, I believe. Yes, I confess my sins. And yes, I accept you, Lord Jesus, as my personal savior. And we can be saved. We can be a part of the body of Christ. I'm not asking if you want to join a church. I'm giving you an opportunity to join the body of Christ. If you are here and you've never asked the Lord Jesus Christ to be your personal Savior, and you want to do that today, right where you are, just lift your hand up and put it back down. We'll pray with you. We'll pray for you. I see that hand. I see that hand. Praise the Lord. Is there another one here that wants to make that commitment to the Lord Jesus. Father, thank you for your faithfulness. I pray that you speak in a way that only we can hear. Tap on our hearts to let us know you are talking to us. When we question, is it me, Lord? Is it me being asked? Let them know yes. Or let them know that they were here not by chance, not by coincidence, not even because somebody asked them, but you divinely created an appointment to speak into their hearts. Confirm whatever it is you have, O oh Lord. I don't claim to know, but you know, O oh God, because you know all things. Have your way, O oh God, and we'll give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen.